truck camper showed up today. Megan's bus. Megan's minivan. Saw, dude. Saw. Dude. My face is dirty. Contrary to what this vlog has led you to believe, we have work today. <laughs> and now we're going to lunch. <laughs> well, you know, you start out with one... Well, you start out with zero dogs at the beginning of the day, and now you have four dogs in a shop. What's up, pup? Say hi. Hello. I can't see you. How cute are you? Cole's not here. Yo, uh, shout out to Crackle Barrel. Really good looking waitresses. Good for you guys. <laughs> Don't. Okay. Let's go. You working? Oh, we're going to the bank. Yeah. Well, uh, doing a lot of hole drilling right now. Not exciting, not fun. Sweating is going on. It is officially getting humid in Wichita. Unsharpened bits really suck. So having a sharpener is really key. Otherwise you spend way too much time on drilling like one hole. So we're gonna sharpen it. Yeah, I still want to try to push it a little bit. Still working out the bend. Chris has started a new little project. He's going to get these all painted for Zep 7. Get them back on there, they're going to be black and it'll look sexy. Megan's in her own little world, cutting metal for framing for her bus. I'm not my own world, I'm actually listening to y'all. Oh, that's awkward. I thought you were listening to something and wouldn't be able to hear me, so I don't know where to go from here. Sometimes the headphones are just fake. All right, have fun. Enjoy. Wow, Jeremy looks so beautiful while drilling. Driving this bus down. You guys complaining about the music being off yeah. again? No. I mean, guys, listen, I just want everyone to leave me a nice comment on YouTube saying how grateful they are that I shut off the music so you can hear clearly everything that's going on. Richard, say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay? Thank you, Richard. Chris, do you want to talk about your art project you got going on? The art project is setting down a bunch of plastic and then repainting it to make that rig look nice and pretty for Brian. You going black on everything? Yep, black and white. Just a few lights. No big deal. 
Yeah, so that's just the uh, upper marker lights on both the front and the back. Technically, you're supposed to take them off legally. Didn't know and, that. Yeah, and it looks better. So I got pulled over for the first time for having a yellow bus on my way to pick up Kobuk in that bus. Is more so I think they thought I was uh, trafficking drugs because about two minutes after they got me out of the vehicle, a drug canine unit came up and went through the rigs. I didn't shut the door, so they actually had the dog in the rig trying to sniff out drugs. So that was fun. Well, hopefully they didn't find all of your drugs. They didn't find any of them. <laughs> Luckily there was none there. They, he, was, he was in there for a while. Yeah, sometimes they're uh, in the mood. So yeah, just making sure this is nice and legal for Brian. Make sure this thing's good on the road so he has no issues and able to create content. So when are you gonna get your Trail 90? I don't do bikes, man. Mm. I don't do bikes. I'm more of a four-wheeler guy. I grew up on four-wheelers. Well, that could be cool. We don't have one of those yet. I don't know if they're street legal here. Uh, it's Kansas. Everything's legal, but the good stuff. So maybe not. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, if four-wheelers were street legal, I might be zooming on one back and forth. If I didn't have to pop, I guess. But. I'll do some research. Think a four-wheeler is street legal? Yeah, if they're street legal here in Kansas. Oh, I'm, a, I'm sure you can buy that kit, right? Like well, the blinker kit? It depends on the city. Oh. Like, yeah, it's city, city and state. Like in Arizona, you could get on a blaster and just ride around right. downtown. Oh, Phoenix yeah, the side by side. Yeah. So here how, whoa, words. Here's how it's looking on the inside. Oh, hi. I look the same from the inside. How do you like my fart? These are all, yeah, I'm literally sitting in Richard's fart right now. You're welcome. <laughs> It wasn't fresh though, that was the remnants. Oh my god. Sweet victory. The top row is drilled. It took a long time. The bad news is the bottom row needs to be drilled. So I'm leaving Jeremy, I'm going inside. Goodbye Jeremy. Bye Jeremy. This is a good smelling job you got over here. Makes the day go by quicker. <laughs> Hi. Oh. It's a Clico remover, not a nipple enter. Richard's adjusting this light. It's like I got a spotlight on me right now. So apparently when you use a drill for five hours straight, it makes you really sore the next day.
getting some things for less. Uh, let's see, we're gonna the battery box. Battery box. Rebuilding the battery box. In there. Back to this guy. Yeah, we're getting uh, we're gonna be putting this, attaching this completely today. Listen, I know we make this look so easy. But this is a lot of hard work, <laughs> and we're just barely holding on today. But we're about to put this backside back up and get it riveted in, and then we can move on with our lives, hopefully. Say something inspiring for them. They think of the people that are in the midst of their bus build right now. They don't know what they're doing with themselves, their lives, their living existential dread every day. Is this just coming off of me right now? Anyways, that's the situation. Give them some inspiration. No matter how hard you think it is, it's not as hard as you think it is. Wes always told me to just turn one screw a day and you're always making progress. I, I try to screw once a day, too, and make progress. Well, I guess I'll act like I'm the informative one. Richard was uh, pointing out that when we're doing the backside here, you want to start from the middle with the rivets, and the metal will kind of push out towards the bend. So I guess that's so you don't screw yourself over once yeah, you get you out to the corners. Yeah, if you started at the end or did any back there. You get some weird bending metal going on, yeah. probably in the midsection. Yeah, ripples. Let's a buckle a or a buckle. ripple, so we'll avoid those. Poor yeah, little we'll, note. So yeah, we'll start in the middle and work our way towards the outside. When you're doing it, of course, you keep the glue out of it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that'll help you get stuff. So now you use like a... Richard broke the rivet give, gun. Give me, a, hit me one of the pins that are already pulled. Okay. And we'll try to shove one in. and see if we can just push it, push it out. Yeah. I don't know. Look what you did. Look what you did, you little jerk. Come, come with me. So I am. You, 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 you can just screw this back on, but when you screw this on, this tip is what actually pushes those back a little bit. Oh, okay. So take the tip off. You don't have to. No. Not, not for this. But sometimes you can just take the tip off only and clear something out. But this one was freaking, you know, I, I tried pushing it out. It was mm -hmm. stuck or stuck bigger than shit. So I just had to take that off. Stuck bigger than shit. Bigger than shit. Huh. Oh, interesting. That's yeah. the way you do that. So then you'll be in business again. But since well, that was... It's a great looking arm you got there, Wes. Oils since was, on it. Yeah, since that was worn on that tip, well... I'm going to drop a couple... A little lube. A couple bit of drops of lube. A couple bit of drops. And we might as well lube this up too, about 10 drops. So. 
Wow, that's a. I never would have put anything on that thing. That's where the piston is and everything that makes this happen. So you got to put oil right in there. When you pull the trigger, the air goes through it and lubes up your piston and all that stuff in there. Learning that's so how you much. lube all air tools right there. Oh, yeah, I knew that. I was just testing you. <laughs>